four, three, two, one. So the Transparency Talks podcast, I am your girl, Butterby Rocker. Listen, we have an amazing show for you today. Her name is Frances Ann Solomon. She is a trailblazer in the film and television industry. She is award-winning writer, director, producer, and distributor and curator in film, television, digital media, radio. And she is the founder of Caribbean Tales Media Group. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being a part of the show. You look absolutely beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I like to dive right on in. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, I, I come from Trinidad and Tobago, which is an island in the Caribbean Sea originally. But I started my career at the BBC in England, which was a while ago, where I was eventually a producer and uh, then I came back to Canada, where I live now, and uh, I run a company called Caribbean Tales Media Group, and we do training for BIPOC and Black um, creators and producers. We create film and television content. We have three film festivals, and um, we do distribution of film and television. Okay. And that has been going on for some time now. Okay. Well, I'm, also gonna... a director. I'm also a film director so that's that's really um I'm a storyteller I'm an artist so okay so I want to dissect that a little bit farther so you are from Trinidad that's you right live in England now no I lived in England um I'm before. sorry now I live in Canada okay okay and you started off being a producer first yes Okay, so how did you get started into doing productions? Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, you mean directing? Yes. Okay, well, I always wanted to be a director. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I, I worked in the theater before I moved into television. Um, I went to university and specialized as a theater director. And then I got a job in television and producing um, content. So I would direct on the side. Um, and uh, I still do that. I still do both. I run my company and we produce content and we you know, train and nurture up and coming filmmakers. But I also am very committed to creating my own work and directing. Okay. So you, you already touched a little bit about this. The, you're the founder of Caribbean Tales Media Group. And you was talking about the different things that your company does. How did you get started with your company and what made you come up with your concept for your company? When I was working at the BBC mm -hmm. in England, um, I, was, I was brought up into this um, organization, which really was a pipeline of all the different aspects of film and television. So, um, you know, they did training, they did production, they, they exhibited their work and they sold their work mm -hmm. in order to make money to create again. So that's, that, that was my background. And so when I started my company as a person of color, I wanted, I did it because I wanted to tell our stories. I wanted it to be a platform for, 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 my stories as a, a female filmmaker, as a black filmmaker, as a filmmaker of color. And, um, but I knew that we would be facing obstacles everywhere we turned, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it was important to create an organization that would be able to do everything <laughs> so that we wouldn't be, you know, expecting other 
white organizations to support us, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's why we created this pipeline of activities that serve um, BIPOC creators as well as audiences. Okay, so does your company, when you're working with different producers and writers and directors, which I am a first time writer, director, producer, of my very first film it's a feature film that's in post right now so i'm definitely interested in talking to you even more knowing this Amazing. um when when you are selecting people to work with how do you go about figuring out you know what works with your company well to, uh, on the first thing really is that we support black indigenous and producers and creators of color Right. Okay. First thing, that's the bottom line. Um, so whether it's training or production or even um, showing films, the most important thing is, is that it's created by by black and of color mm -hmm. creators, right? That it's owned and created because we want to to raise up those voices which have been marginalized for a long time. Um, the second thing tends to come down to what we think we can support in the market, you know, like mm -hmm. what stories resonate with our audiences, but even probably more importantly is, is what we think we can get funding for, or how we think, you know, because I feel like um, film and television is just an, you know, it's just an expensive medium, you know, mm -hmm. it, it ha we you have to have some money behind it. So we have to be able to identify where we can get money, what, 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 what sources of funding um, you know, will support this work. Um, and, and those are tough decisions to make, you know? So, um, so those are the kind, those are the, I think those are the two main, main things. And also, of course, yeah, so, um, stories by women story of color mm -hmm. stories by black and of color creators and producers and then um what do our audiences want to see audiences want to see all kinds of things you know i mean audiences in themselves are very diverse really that that's another big key for me that i don't have a pre um, I don't have a pre-thought notion of what it is that audience, our audiences, Black audiences, audiences of color, immigrant audiences, um, you know, diverse audiences. I don't have a pre-arranged concept about what they want to see because there is a, as many different tastes and, and genres of, of Black storytelling as there is any kind of storytelling, right? I think mm -hmm. it's so varied what we can do. Um, and then what funders will support, which is the tough part really, yeah. Okay, so when a, a company comes to you or a writer comes to you, they present a pitch deck to you or do they have to present already a film that you then determine, hey, I'm going to help fund this and I'm gonna help distribute this. How does that work for you? Um, there are multiple points of entrance for us, right? So um, we support a lot of emerging filmmakers and producers, writers, directors, producers um, through our training programs. Right. And um, our goal with the training is not just to to tell them or you know what to do because that's not my job i feel everybody everybody knows what stories there you know your story mm -hmm. you have a story to tell our role is really to help them to get their project made you know and give them the tools to get it made and get that hands-on experience of actually making making projects okay so and people should come to you when they're in their pre um, part of coming up with their concepts and everything, and y'all help them get it developed and funded to actually film and then distribute. Yeah, or or show them, put them in the right direction to do that. Exactly. That's training programs, and then in our production arm, right, we look for projects that we can co-produce. Mm. So 
we, you know, there are, as a Canadian company, we can offer different kinds of Canadian funding and we look for projects that will fit with what we are able to get funded here. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And then in terms of, um, we, you know, our festivals, that's much wider in terms, those are already made films that are looking to get a platform, you know, in Canada or in England, which is where our other festival is. And then the, through our distribution arm, Again, um, we're looking for uh, projects that that um, that you know buyers will want to buy and audiences to see. So, for example, our distribution company, one of our distribution companies, is Black Market Releasing. Mm -hmm. That's specifically for Canadian feature films distribution in Canada, Canadian-made distribution films. But we also um, we also accept projects for distribution on our VOD platform, which is Caribbean Tales TV. And then we also do a, a, um, a very limited number of international sales um, where we will distribute internationally. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's very informative because, because like I said, I am a new um, right. film, film. Yeah, thank you. And mm -hmm. There are people that, you know, do want to know the next steps on what they should do. Why can you tell my audience, why is it important to be involved with your films in film festivals? I think film festivals really are your first contact with audiences. Mm -hmm. They raise the profile of the film. First of all, audiences get to see it. And, you know, there are hundreds of film festivals now, right? Um, so you can get, you can have your film on a festival circuit for a couple of years, really, and get it screened all over the world, right? There are also now online distribution platforms like Gava, um, which are actually called um, Cinema Releases On Demand. Do you know about those? I don't. Yeah, well, you can pay them, like I think it's a thousand dollars, which is really nothing. And they um, have a selection of cinemas across the United States, I think, and mm -hmm. Canada, I believe. And um, there, are, there, are, there are platforms like this, um, in, in, there are a number of platforms like this in different territories. And, um, and, the, and you can, you know, if you have a partner, for example, in um, Florida, you know, who wants to screen your film, mm -hmm. you can book a cinema in Florida on this platform. And then um, you and the partner can work to, you just, I think you have to pay for a certain number of tickets up front, and then you can just have a cinema screening. So there's festivals, which are wonderful. They raise the, they give you an, an access to audiences. They raise the profile of your film among distributors because a lot of distributors attend film festivals looking for films to distribute right mm -hmm. it gets your name out on in you know in the industry mm -hmm. and with audiences they're very very helpful you know and it doesn't cost filmmakers very much you know um you know there's a fee to pay to be paid to enter your film in a film festival right um but look at what you're getting you know, you're getting a cinema, an audience, marketing, you know, um, a profile, your name out, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot that you're getting in return for, I don't know, between 25 and, and $45, you know? Right, right. You mentioned something that is very, very true. There's a lot of film festivals out there. So for someone that's new, how do you weed out what's good and what's bad? you know, because yeah. all of them don't get you the proper exposure that you need. Some, you know, are startups, I guess, and there ain't nothing wrong with a startup, but how do you know which one is the ones that you should be looking at to put into your film into? Well, um, there's like a top tier. Okay. Right. Um, so those are kind of globally, they are, um, there's a, Toronto International Film Festival, Cannes, um, Berlin, um, Tribeca, mm -hmm. um, 
and, um, and a couple of others, Vienna. Um, those are the kind of the A-list festivals. Um, start there, mm -hmm. right? If you don't get accepted to those festivals, then the next step down is really all, if you're a black filmmaker, all the black film festivals. And there's a bunch of top tier black film festivals, which is PATH, you know, um, a, a bunch of them globally, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look up black film festivals, you'll get a list and go for the top ones of those. If you don't get into those, but you should, you will, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're very, that's, that's what they consider, including ours actually, Caribbean Tales. Um, that's our mandate, right? I mean, PATH, for example, the Pan-African Film Festival shows hundreds of films every year. Mm -hmm. you know, um, they're really, really good at showcasing new filmmakers. Um, the Black Filmmakers are, Film Festivals are really, really, really important in terms of supporting Black film. Um, and then after that, once your film has been showcased in one of these festivals, make sure you go to the festivals if you can, you know, put the money aside and go support your film, be visible, meet other people, meet distributors, meet filmmakers. And then after that, just put it in everywhere. The thing is that once you do start getting out onto the festival circuit and people start hearing about your film, Mm -hmm. um, which hopefully you also have a website and you're doing a little newsletter to say where your film is screening and so on. Then people started, you know, festivals will start inviting your film. And after the first, I'd say, year, you just accept every single one. I think so, because that's free marketing. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a small festival or a big festival, it's, it doesn't, it, if they invite you, it doesn't cost you anything and um and go you know talk to people meet people you don't know and you never know what's going to happen or after a while you don't have to go any longer but um i was going to say something else but i can't remember yeah go <laughs> okay so i do have another question about the festivals you have three film festivals yeah and they are based strictly for Canadian work no. or okay so Caribbean Tales mm -hmm. International Film Festival which is now in its 17th year we've been doing congratulations that. thank you um that is for filmmakers of Caribbean and African heritage right so we do show um for example American black American films sometimes but it's mostly Caribbean mostly Caribbean heritage okay and um, we also show um, some films of African heritage and it's all around the world. So it's Caribbean diaspora, right? So we definitely do show some Black American films, but the thing is that there are a lot of Black American festivals, you know? And when I started Caribbean Tales, those same festivals, they didn't want to show my films because they were like, yeah, we show Black American films. We don't know anything about the Caribbean. Caribbean is not us. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> but we really feel it is important to have a mandate to showcase films, of, you know, from the Caribbean diaspora by Caribbean people all over the world, mm -hmm. you know, because it's a it, it's it's a niche, you know, and it's an important voice. And then we have Cinefam Women of Color Film Festival, and that's open to filmmakers from around the world. We do have a mandate because we're funded by by Canadian funds to show. I think 50% Canadian films, but we show films by women of color around the world. And then uh, Windrush is, is, is mostly British filmmakers, Black British filmmakers, yeah. Okay, well, at least I can, I can I fit into one of those rims. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, cool, okay. Um, you have a film called Hero that was recently debuted and highly anticipated and it appeared, it's called Hero Inspired by the Life and Times of Mr. Erk Cross. Elric. Elric Cross. Can you tell us about your film? Sure. Um, it's, well, I'll tell you a little bit about of the backstory. It was, um, it was, I guess, a labor of love uh, because my mother, well, because Elric was a friend of our family. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a 
a friend of my mother's um, and he, um, you know, my mother often would say, you know, I really want to think that, you know, his life has been amazing and, and that, you know, I'd like to get a film made by, about him. And, um, you know, she went out and she raised money, my mother, you know, in her seventies, um, decided to become a film producer, <laughs> went out and raised this money. And, um, you know, as the filmmaker in the family, she really wanted me to make it. So I took it on mm -hmm. and the more I, I took it on because, you know, she really, she was really passionate about it. The more I researched about Ulrich's life, the more I felt this was a story that I wasn't doing for her or even for him really, that I, it was something that needed to be told. He was um, a man from Trinidad who served in the Second World War. He was um, in England. He was the most decorated West Indian in World War II. And after the war, he went to Ghana, right? Mm -hmm. He was recruited by Kwame Nkrumah, who was the first black president of Ghana, right? To come and, uh, you know, help Ghana become independent in the late 50s. Um, a, lot of, a lot of Caribbean people and black Americans and black people from all over the world were called to Africa to help with the transformation process mm -hmm. in the late 50s. You know, it's part of our history, our global history. Right. And from Ghana, he was recruited to go and help um, with the, you know, to help to write the constitution in Cameroon, which had just become independent. And then he went to help um, President Nyerere in Tanzania. He ran the law school there, training lawyers in the newly independent Tanzania. And I just thought, this is amazing. How yeah. many people know this story, you know? We need to know this story. So it's been amazing because everywhere I show it, you know, whether it's in the Caribbean, in Trinidad or in England where he served in the war or in Ghana where he worked as a lawyer or here in Canada or in the States when I showed it at PATH, there are always people in the audience who say, that's my story. You're, thank you so much. My father, you know, was recruited to Tanzania or, and I didn't know what he was doing there, but now I do, mm -hmm. or, you know, I, you know, I was part of the civil rights movement here in America at the time that all of that was happening or this wonderful woman who runs the African Film Festival in New York, who's from Senegal. And she said, I knew all of those people, all of them. They were in and out of my house when I was a child, you know? Wow. So it's really, it's really powerful to, to be able to tell a story that brings together people in that kind of way. And also that, um, you know, fills in the gap for so many, for so many people, you know, fills in the gaps and what they know because none of us learned mm -hmm. about our history, you know? Right, yeah. right, right. Wow, sounds like uh, an amazing film. Can you tell us the difference, uh, in your opinion, of Canadian filmmakers and American filmmakers? Um, I think, I think there's a different funding system. Like we, go, the government funds film here in Canada. I'm moving. I'm moving <laughs> <to Canada. laughs> yeah, we, we, we get, I mean, it's not, you have to, um, you have to apply for it. It's quite bureaucratic and it's so on, but the government does fund filmmaking in Canada. Wow. Yeah, and that I think that's the biggest difference. Yeah, because I don't, it's not funded. I mean, either you, it seems to me that in the States, either you manage to, you know, get into Hollywood and, you know, be, you're strong enough to, to be able to, I don't know what it takes to survive that system and, and go up that ladder. Mm -hmm. Or how do you survive as a filmmaker? I don't know. I, I paid out of pocket for every single thing. First film. It, I, I come from the entertainment world of singing. I'm an yeah. international recording artist and getting funding for music and people knowing me for that. That's, that's easy. 
But when I, when I switched to filmmaking during COVID, where I couldn't tour anymore because everything was shut down and it was like, okay, you're gonna have to figure out what else you're good at. And I'm very good at storytelling. And I, I, I initially I had wrote a play before COVID. And so I always wanted to do a film. And so I did my first film, but it was hard to get investors because no one has seen me do a film before. Mm -hmm. So I had to pay out of pocket for everything. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yep. So I think that's the biggest difference, really. Um, and the reason why the government of Canada funds film is um, really because the the U.S. industry is so strong that it it you know dominating Canada is so close to America. Mm -hmm. You know, it 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 threatens to dominate our our industry and our talent and our audiences, right? Mm -hmm. So. There's a very strong investment in developing Canadian stories, you know, Canadian talent. Wow. Okay. So speaking of COVID, how did COVID positively impact your, you personally and professionally? Because of course, we already know how it affected, uh, uh, impacted everyone, you know, on the negative side. Yeah. So the first thing is personally, I am an introvert. So honestly, I loved it. <laughs> it's really tough to say. And of course, lots of terrible, terrible things happen. And we all got COVID a number of times, of course, but um, which wasn't fun. And we lost a lot of people, obviously, but, you know, staying at home by myself and I, I live on my own with my four dogs and one cat for me was a gift um, and it showed me how much I really like to be alone and how much I I'm able to create and and you know think and nurture myself and garden and cook and all these things that mm -hmm. I never really took the time to do before so that's on a on a personal side professionally also I mean the big thing that happened in COVID is that we all sat at home and watched George Floyd getting murdered mm -hmm. on Facebook and on television over and over and over again, had a huge impact on the world and really led to a transformation in our industry. And in Canada, I think maybe more, at least as much, if not more than anywhere else. So there was a sea change in our industry in terms of representation following um, that event, you know, um, that has been, that has benefited us, you know, as creators of color, as Black creators and producers, there was, there really has been a, a huge um, shift. Um, whereas prior, you know, we were, you know, there was very little representation. Now we are definitely um, being heard and being given a platform to tell our stories. And that's very exciting, yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of being heard, you are, you sit on the, the um, you're a branch executive committee of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. You are one of the directors or something? No, no, no. I'm, I'm a member. Okay. Of of the Oscar uh, the Academy, but also this year only, I'm a member, like I'm, a, I'm on the director's branch executive. Of okay, the okay. So what does that entail? And congratulations, okay. by the way. Thank you. So being a member means you get to vote, um, which as you know, like um, a few years ago, you had Oscars so white, and the huge push in Hollywood to to diversify. And again, they, they've done a good job. You know, they opened up the academy to lots of voices, including mine, uh, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. And um, so we get to vote for films every year. Um, and then uh, as the executive, we get, we get to um, select vote for new members. 
Okay. All right. We are, according to this, my time is about to run out. So I'm going to ask two more questions. Can you tell people how they can find you? Sure. So um, through our website, so my website is francisannesolomon.com. That's my personal website. The company's website is caribbeantales.ca. And our festivals website is caribbeanfestivals.com. We also have our training arm, which is creative, create, creatorsofcolor.com. And I think just by, um, we have our, our um, distribution arm, which is caribbeantales.tv.com, um, Caribbean Tales Worldwide and Black Market Releasing. But if you Google um, me or Caribbean Tales, it'll all come up basically, so. Okay. And any upcoming projects that you want to plug? <laughs> um, well, I think our festival is coming up. Okay. Just uh, in a couple of weeks, our 17th annual Caribbean Tales Film Festival. So that's exciting. We're, we're going to be showing 35 new films, as well as have an online festival um, afterwards. So that's great. And then, um, and then personally, I'm looking forward to a couple of projects that I'm directing. One is called In the Black, which is about an amazing entrepreneur called Denim Jolly. Mm -hmm. And another one called Claudia, which is about the incredible, incredible activist, Claudia Jones. So I'm very excited about those films. Okay. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation and I learned a lot as, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to be contacting you for your film festival. So I learned a whole lot from, from this and I believe that other filmmakers and directors and writers and everything also will learn a lot from what you just told us. So I would like to thank you so much for being a part of Transparency Talks podcast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I had a good time. Okay. Well, with that being said, everyone, we are out of here and we will talk to you guys.